let's talk a little bit about congruence. Congruence. And one way to think about congruence, it's, it's, it's really kind of equivalence for shape. So in an algebra, when something is equal to another thing, it means that their quantities are the same. But if we're now all of a sudden talking about shapes, and we say that those shapes are the same, the shapes are the same size and shape, then we say that they're congruent. And just to see a simple example here, I have this triangle right over there. And let's say I have this triangle right over here. And if you are able to shift, if you are able to shift this triangle and rotate this triangle and flip this triangle, you can make it look exactly like this triangle. As long as you're not changing the lengths of any of the sides or the angles here, but you can flip it, you can shift it, you can do any and, and rotate it. So you can shift, let me write this. You can shift it, you can flip it, you can flip it and you can rotate. If you can do those three procedures to make these the exact same triangle, to make them look exactly the same, then they are congruent. And if you say that a triangle is congruent, and let me label these. So let's call this triangle A, B, and C. And let's call this D, or let me call it X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. So if we were to say, if you, we make the claim that both of these triangles are congruent, so if we say triangle a, B, C is congruent, and the way you specified it, it looks almost like an equal sign, but it's an equal sign with this little curly thing on top. We write it a little bit neater. So we would write it like this. If we know that triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle X, Y, X, Y, Z, that means that the, their corresponding sides have the same length, and their corresponding angles and the corresponding angles have the same measure. So if we make this assumption, if we or if someone tells us that this is true, then we know, then we know, for example, that AB is going to be equal to XY. The length of segment AB is going to be equal to the length of segment XY. And we could denote it like this. And I'm assuming that these are the corresponding sides. And you can see it actually by the way we've 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 defined these triangles. A corresponds to X. B corresponds to Y, and then C corresponds to Z right over there. So AB, side AB is going to have the same length as side XY. And you can sometimes, if you don't have the colors, you would denote it just like that. These, these two lengths are, have, or these two line segments have the same length. And you can actually say this, and you, you don't always see it written this way. You could, always also make, you could also make the statement that line segment AB is congruent is congruent to line segment xy. But congruence of line segments really just means that their lengths are equivalent. So these two things mean the same thing. If one line segment is congruent to another line segment, that just means the measure of one line segment is equal to the measure of the other line segment. And so we can go through all of the corresponding sides. If these two characters are congruent, we also know, we also know that BC we also know the length of BC is going to be the length of X, y, X of YZ, assuming that those are the corresponding sides. And we could put these double hash marks right over here to show that this one, it, the, these two lengths are the same. And then if we go to the third side, we also know that these are going to be, have the same length, or the line segments themselves are going to be congruent. So we also know that the length of AC, the length of AC is going to be equal to the length of xz is going to be equal to the length of xz. We not only do we know that all of the sides are the corresponding sides are going to have the same length if someone tells us that a triangle is congruent, we also know that all the corresponding angles are going to have the same measure. So for example, we also know we also know that this angle's measure is going to have the is going to be the same as the corresponding angle's measure and the corresponding angle is right over here. It's between this orange side and this blue side, or this orange side and this purple side, I should say, and between the orange side and this purple side. And so it also tells us that the measure, the measure of angle is this BAC, measure of angle BAC is equal to the measure of angle of angle YXZ. Measure of angle, let me write that angle symbol a little less like a measure of angle YXZ. Y XZ. We could also write that as angle BAC is congruent to angle Y 
x, z. And once again, like line segments, if a, one line segment is congruent to another line segment, it just means that their lengths are equal. And if one angle is congruent to another angle, it just means that their measures are equal. So we know that those two corresponding angles have the same measure. They're congruent. We also know that these two corresponding angles have the same measure. And I'll use a double arc to specify that this has the same measure as that. So we also know that the measure, the measure of angle ABC, ABC is equal to the measure of angle XYZ, XYZ. And then finally, we know, we finally we know that this angle, if we know that these two characters are congruent, that this angle is going to have the same measure as this angle, as its corresponding angle. So we know that the measure of angle ACB, ACB is going to be equal to the measure of angle XZY, XZY. Now what we're going to concern ourselves a lot with is how do we prove congruence? Because it's cool, because if you can prove congruence of two triangles, then all of a sudden you can make all of these assumptions. 